let's talk about composition. Well, I'm actually going to start with something. An ABC. ABC means always be curious. This is the kind of the entry point of composition. You should always look around and be curious about your environment. What is in the environment? Where is the photograph? What could I capture that would be interesting? But it not, it's not just about capturing photographs. It's also about just being interested in general. This is, oh boy, that green screen's interfering with it. This is um, the Patagonia 50th anniversary magazine they just put out. 50 years ago, Patagonia started. I don't know if you guys go back that far, but I do. I actually used their mountaineering equipment, their rock climbing gear in the late early 70s, even before Patagonia was started. Yvonne Chouinard was a, is still, he's the founder of Patagonia, uh, but he was a, a rock climber and he created really great mountaineering gear that we used. So this is in their magazine they put out for their 50th anniversary. Do you see that? An honest shot. And there's some stuff in here I want to read you that's really important. Because always be curious means look around not just for a photograph, but where can you learn about photography? Where can you learn about art? Keep a wide antenna. Look for it all over the place. Yvonne Chouinard, so when they first put together their catalogs, they use really corny shots of models to model their clothing. And if you're familiar with their gear, they don't do that anymore. He said, you know, Yvonne Chouinard said, we need an honest shot of real people doing real things. This is an important lesson. Honest shot, like what's an honest shot mean? It means you're showing what's actually there. Now, you might think I'm, contradicting myself because I also say, well, as a photographer, you can be a director and you can, doesn't mean it's, it's still an honest shot. It's just that you could have somebody stand over here so the tree isn't growing out of the back of their head. You could have them doing something. In this case, they're showing their equipment or their, or their gear or their clothing. It's still an honest shot. But then they're, uh, earliest director of, of photography, her name is Jennifer Ridgway, said a good photograph has a right attitude of mind, the right spirit, but then she added something else to it. She says, we like photography that has magic. This is hard to articulate. Some in images have a spirit beyond their composite parts. I'd say that's what we're looking for in a great photograph, wouldn't you? There's something about it. There's some bit of magic that transcends everything else. And if you think about the photographs or paintings that really inspire you, that really have a tremendous feeling that pulls you in, there's something beyond those different elements. And that's the first lesson I want to impart look for that. Okay, so how do you do that? Imagine. And the most powerful thing that you have, that we all have, is our power of imagination. This is in Strawberry Fields, which is in New York City in Central Park. And it's the closest part of Central Park to where John Lennon lived in the Dakota building and unfortunately where he was shot. And they made a basically a part of the park forum called Strawberry Fields. And they made this, imagine, a mosaic. And composition starts not with a camera, but with your imagination and your ability to look and visualize a photograph. So let's look at that. Visualization, if you've read any of my books, you know that that's where it all begins. You visualize a photograph. That's the power behind the camera. That's you with your mind and your power of vision. And, you know, when I asked Chase Jarvis early on, what does visualization mean to you? And he said, 
it's you getting the idea, but it's before you even have the camera pressed to your face. Because the camera pressed to your face is going to immediately limit your view just like that. So he said, look at the whole scene and look for the photograph. That's actually really, really important advice, as simple as that seems. When you go out to photograph, don't immediately put a camera to your face. Look around. You got to look for the photograph. You got to spot it. And a camera just gets in the way. Bob Holmes said the the thing is you want to learn your camera so well, it doesn't get in the way of your photography. Okay. So the power of visualization is where a composition starts. Now we're going to get into another interesting part of that, which is what is your vision? Do you have a vision for yourself as a photographer and what you're trying to say? This is really important. You know, before you go out to photograph, what are, what are you trying to say? Where, where are you going and what do you want to come home with? That's all part of that visualization process. Don't just randomly go out and photograph and expect that that's going to turn into a magical photograph. Maybe you will get lucky, but we're not talking about luck here. We're talking about using a control point, which is you and your mind, to control where you want to go with that shot. What is your vision? Why am I picking up this camera? What do I want to say with it? Just like if before you start typing on a keyboard, you don't just type random keys. You're, you're going to compose an email to somebody or you're going to compose a caption for a photograph or whatever it is. You have to get the idea of what you're going to say. You don't just let your fingers rattle off something. It's just going to come out like gibberish. So start with your vision. And from your vision, you use this tool just like I'm using here, to frame and find that photograph. And this is also a really important exercise. It's something you should be doing all the time, just like training. You know, just like if you're playing basketball, what do you do? You practice shooting. You practice shooting. You play golf. You practice swinging. You know, the, the amount of time you practice compared to actually playing is probably 10 or 20 times to one. Now, you got hands all the time. So you can walk around and do this, or you can do this, and you should do that all the time. You probably heard me say this, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's really an important exercise. Train your eye. Photographs don't just jump off the wall and say, hey, Mark, there's a great photograph. Sometimes they do, and that's really cool, but that's because you saw it. The world around you, the environment itself, doesn't hit you on the head and say, doing, 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 doing. You know, press the shutter now. You, with your trained eye, have to see the photograph. And this is where composition begins. Uh, where I began, I'm going to give you a little story of kind of my history as a photographer. This is me at age nine with that cute little brownie camera. I was in love with that. Hey, how about those rolled up cuffs on my jeans? <laughs> Believe it or not, that was the style back then. Yep, having big rolled up cuffs was pretty cool. So that was me, age nine. And I didn't really discover the magic of photography until I went into the darkroom at age 12. Then it really bit and I went, wow, this is the coolest thing in the world. Because before that, I was just sending my photographs off to the drugstore and they came back really muddy and I had no control over them. All of a sudden, I learned I could control exposure, contrast. I could crop. I had all these things I could do, you guys. The magic of the darkroom. It's amazing, right? And for anybody out there, raise your hand if you've worked in the darkroom. You know what I'm talking about. Let me know on the chat over here. I'd be really curious to hear from you guys. But that was the magic. Now we have a digital darkroom. I'm embarrassed to say I don't go in the darkroom anymore. I want to, and it's on my list of things to do again. But, you know, I do process things digitally, but I remember and I use my vision from the darkroom itself in my processing, digital processing. 
This was one of my earlier photographs. Really, this is the earliest one that I have published. And it means that it's a photograph I've sold. So when I was 12 years old, technically, I became a pro photographer. This is uh, interesting because you'll notice that it's turned on an angle. It's actually an 18 degree angle. I've measured it later. And it's the first thing that you can think about is how do I want to point my camera? You don't have to stand there and be eye level with the camera straight on. You can, you can move it any way you want. And that's something you should be thinking about with your composition. How do I want to point this camera? Because that, that twist, 18 degree twist, made all the difference in the world between just sort of a snapshot and an interesting photograph. I learned that at age 12. I don't know how or where. I just think I was inquisitive. I had my ABC. I was always curious. So I thought, what I wonder what it's going to look like if I turn it. Well, Tim always wanted to try a dark room, so put that on your list to do that. Okay, Brian, oh, the memories of a dark room. Yeah, there's some... As, as romantic as it sounds, I do not miss the chemicals. And frankly, it's a lot of work <laughs> by comparison. I'm being very honest with you. But this was uh, another photograph, age 13. Um, my friends were jumping off a sand dune. Let me move that, move myself out of the way, so. They're jumping off a sand dune and I managed to get them at the perfect moment, the decisive moment when there was this perfect arc here. And a second later, that would have been gone. So I learned early on about the decisive moment. This is also a very important composition tool. The decisive moment is that moment when you want to press the shutter. Henri Cartier-Bresson captured or coin that phrase, press the shutter at that exact moment, which means you really have to be looking. Now, some people will go, well, Mark, how can you visualize and know exactly when this thing? I did pre-visualize. I visualized this shot. And then I positioned myself down below them in the sand dunes. And then I told them, you guys, when I tell you to jump, you jump. Okay, run towards me and then jump, jump. Boom, I pressed the shutter. So I did control this shot. It's still an honest shot. I controlled it and I got the vision that I wanted. I'm gonna leave you guys with these thoughts. We're actually going to come back and do a part two of this, but I wanna leave you with these things I've gone over. You know, sometimes less is more. Instead of giving you 12 things to kind of remember, I want you to think about the things I've gone over here. Just kind of a recap. Let's just recap here a little bit and just go out and photograph with these things in mind. So first of all, go back to your visualization. Don't put the camera right to your face. Look around at the scene before you even begin to look at what's going on with the camera. And then think about what is my vision for this photograph? What am I trying to say? or if it's a series of photographs, what do I want to say with these photographs? Use those hands all the time. Train yourself to see photographs and get yourself a little brownie camera. You don't have to do that. But I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I hope I've given you something to work on. I want you to work on that. I want to hear from you. If you leave your comments here, that would be awesome. Tell me what you got out of this and tell me how you're gonna use it and you can come back later or you can go to our AYP Club um, Facebook group. Jared will put the link in there and leave your comments there, okay? So I'd like you guys to, if you would like, subscribe. Remember to subscribe, well, I gotta remind you of that. Subscribe to these videos and enable the bell so you don't miss anything, okay? And share them. You've got to know somebody that needs to know these things, right? These are not tools that you ever want to forget. 
And don't ever fall into the trap. Oh, Mark's just going over like simple basics. Well, yeah, they're simple basics, but like all things that are simple, they're very powerful. Or I should say that the other way around. All powerful things are quite simple when you get right down to it. Even splitting the atom, if you think about it, that's a fairly simple concept. It may may have complex parts to it, but the idea of splitting it and opening up all that energy is a fairly simple concept. Opening up the energy of your mind or the power of your mind with visualization is a very simple concept, but it's something you need to drill and train yourself with. So thank you for joining me and remember to get out and capture your own images of life.